Could Lewis Hamilton deliver a race win after his amazing pole position? Could Ferrari and Vettel somehow in the Grand Prix fight back? And could Red Bull seriously compete for victory? Find out in this video. The race in Singapore by no real surprise was not that exciting, with long periods of boredom. But after two long hours, Lewis Hamilton would take the race victory. Hamilton wins from Verstappen 2nd, Vettel 3rd, Bottas 4th and Kimi Raikkonen in 5th. Then it's Ricardo P6, Alonso P7, Sainz in P8, Leclerc in P9 and Hülkenberg in P10. And then missing out on points would be Ericsson, Van Dorn, Gasly, Stroll, Grosjean, Perez, Hartley, Magnussen and Sorokin. With Esteban Ocon the only retirement. To start off this review though, let's look at how the top teams did. After delivering one of the best laps of his career on Saturday, Hamilton superbly controlled the race and won. In the opening stint of the race though, it wasn't entirely comfortable, as he did have Sebastian Vettel and Max Verstappen quite close behind. But after his one and only pit stop, he went on to dominate, performing very well on the soft compound tyre. There was a slight scare though when he was trying to lap Grosjean and Sorokin when Verstappen closed up a lot, but after holding off Max, Lewis then pulled away massively and went on to take his fourth win out of the last five races. This weekend, Lewis did prove why he is such a great, but for his teammate Bottas, it was a quiet Grand Prix, finishing down in P4. He did though have some trouble at the end of the race with worn tyres holding up Kimi Raikkonen and Daniel Ricciardo, but because it's so hard to pass in Singapore, he was always going to hang on for P4. But what a weekend it has been for Mercedes. This really could be the race that goes on to win them both championships. Ferrari desperately needed a positive result in this race, but failed to get that result. Because again, Ferrari messed up their strategy by taking a risk with Sebastian Vettel in trying to undercut Lewis Hamilton. And well, quite frankly, it didn't work. All after Vettel's good work in getting past Max Verstappen at the start and closing right up to the back of Lewis Hamilton in the first stint. But of course, someone at Ferrari had to bottle it. Now, I completely understand them trying to undercut Lewis Hamilton, but they knew for sure they did not have the gap to all of the midfield. Thus, why Sebastian got stuck behind Sergio Perez, which went on to cost him second place to Max Verstappen. He should have run longer into the Grand Prix than he actually did, and they made another mistake at that only pit stop by putting on the ultra soft instead of the soft, despite the ultra soft being terrible and the soft being good. That all led to Vettel finishing in P3. And for Kimi Raikkonen, well, he did all he could. He closed up to the back of Bottas at the end of the race, but he just could not pass. Ferrari's form is getting worse. Just when is it going to stop? Honestly, who knows at this point. At the next race in Russia, they should have the fastest car, but we all know what should means with Ferrari. Knowing them in Russia, they'll lock out the front row, but Hamilton will still win. That is just how poor Ferrari are, as Vettel's world title hopes continue to slip away. At times in this Grand Prix, Red Bull were looking good. After the only round of pit stops where Max Verstappen jumped Sebastian Vettel, his pace was actually quite good, as he was lapping around the same pace as Lewis Hamilton, but then progressively started to lose time. But for Verstappen, it was a great drive because of the way he passed Vettel at the first round of pit stops and also dealing with his reliability issues. As he almost stalled under the safety car, he was lucky he finished in P2. Daniel Ricciardo, though, tried everything but could not finish any higher than sixth. He just did not have enough pace. He did, though, at the end, close up to the back of Raikkonen and Bottas but could not overtake because, again, it is so hard to overtake but definitely a good Grand Prix for Red Bull. It could have been better, but at least they got a podium. Now though, let's look at the driver's standings. Lewis Hamilton now leads by 40 points from Sebastian Vettel with Kimi Raikkonen in P3. Valtteri Bottas is three points behind in fourth with Verstappen fifth and Ricardo clearly in P6. At best, Vettel has a 25% chance of winning this world championship, but realistically, it is Hamilton's to lose. Now though, let's review the midfield teams. 
McLaren in the race actually performed really well, with Fernando Alonso in P7 and Stoffel van Dorn in 12th. That is a much better result than even McLaren were expecting. And for me, Fernando Alonso was the driver of the day. Because even though the McLaren was decent, it's still not a great car. And he drove the wheels off of that car. And at one point on the soft tyres, he had the fastest lap. That is clear proof that he is still one of the best on the grid. And did well as well to not get lapped. Starting on harder tyres compared to the top 10 really worked out for Fernando. And it also worked out for Stoffel. As because there were cars losing time in traffic, Stoffel was able to get his way up to P12. And was very close to the back of Marcus Ericsson at the end of the race. So he could have got P11. Nice to see Van Dorn having a good race for once. And overall a good Grand Prix for McLaren. It was also a good one for the Renault Works team. As Carlos Sainz pretty much had a similar Grand Prix to his compatriot Fernando Alonso. Starting on the hard ultra soft tyre and then running very long into the Grand Prix. And because other cars were held up in traffic he jumped up eventually into P8. A nicely driven race by Carlos. And Hülkenberg in 10th actually did very well. As he was stuck in that traffic behind Sergei Sorokin in the mid part of the race. But then he fought his way past Sorokin and got up to P10. Great aggressive driving from Hülkenberg. But with Haas not scoring any points in this race, this was brilliant for Renault. And exactly what they needed going into the final six races. Things are definitely looking better for Renault. What an awful race this was for Force India. First, where Sergio Perez took Esteban Ocon out at the start. Causing Ocon to have quite a big accident. Now in my opinion, Perez is not at fault for this incident and I think it's just a racing incident. I'm not sure Perez actually saw Ocon or actually knew where he was. And to be fair, Ocon was going for an impossible move around the outside. Because on the exit of the corner, it does get very tight and make it kind of impossible for a move. So for me, they're just a racing incident. But when it comes to Perez's crash with Sergei Sorokin, this was so, so poor. He's racing with Sorokin, Sorokin is not making a move towards his car. But then Perez suddenly for no reason decides to turn left. And deservedly he ruined his own race in doing so. I have no idea what Perez thought he was doing. Such poor driving. And what a poor race for Force India. This really should have been a double points finish for the team. Because as Perez proved in the first stint of the race they had the pace to do so. Time to pick themselves up for the next race in Russia. You know what, Williams' race was not that bad. I thought Lance Stroll had a decent Grand Prix finishing in P14. And even though Sago Sorokin was last of all the runners, I was impressed a bit with his defensive driving. Even if sometimes it was a bit too aggressive. For example, when he forced Brendan Hartley off the track. But at least he did show some robust defensive qualities. Something I never thought he had. So not a bad Grand Prix for Williams. As I predicted, Toro Rosso's race was unspectacular, finishing 13th and 17th with both cars. And in general, there was just no pace here to be seen. The two drivers though did have some good racing during the Grand Prix. For example, Pierre Gasly with Charles Leclerc. But a lot of the time, the Toro Rossos were the ones being overtaken. Not a good weekend for Toro Rosso at all. And I don't see it getting any better in Russia. In this Grand Prix, Haas had no pace whatsoever. For example, for Grosjean in the first stint, he had horrible tyre wear. Leading him to pit early and then get stuck behind Sergei Sorokin. And that completely destroyed his race. And I still maintain that his overtake on Sorokin was illegal. As he clearly went off the track to do that move. And the same goes for Kevin Magnussen on his move on Brendan Hartley. Clearly going off the track at turn 1 to complete that move. But this result for Haas is not what they needed. They had to score points in this race and they had to beat Renault. And instead have gifted them an extra 5 points. They have to turn this around for the next Grand Prix. And for Sauber they were actually quite surprising. With Charles Leclerc scoring points in P9 and Marcus Ericsson just missing out in P11. And I feel as though Leclerc's drive in the race was actually quite underrated. 
showing good speed and nicely getting himself up into the points, whilst his rivals were stuck behind Sergei Sorokin. Definitely one of the top 5 drivers of the day. And Marcus Ericsson also had a good race in P11, and all in all for Sauber a good race. Hopefully in Russia they build on this result. Let's see though how this all affects the constructor's standings. Mercedes now have a bigger lead in first place from Ferrari in second and Red Bull in P3. I think Mercedes are going to take the constructors. I think Mercedes will take the constructors title as well. Renault now extend their gap to Haas by 15 points for fourth place. As McLaren extend their gap to Force India for P6. This was a good result for Renault powered cars. Toro Rosso at 8th but Sauber have closed the gap in P9. With Williams of course 10th. But that's it guys for the 2018 Singapore Grand Prix. As we kind of expected the race was not that good. But next up guys is Russia. I cannot wait to get that race out of the way. Hopefully though by some miracle it actually will be good. But it probably won't be. So get ready guys for more boredom in Russia. But anyway guys that has been it for this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Don't forget guys, in an hour I will be live for a post-race Q&A. And as well, don't forget to join our Discord server, there's a link below down in the description, also with my Twitter and my website. Comment down below what you thought of this video, and comment down below what did you think of the 2018 Singapore Grand Prix. Please comment down below what you think about those topics, and until next time, it's been me, Chazzer HD. goodbye.